All right. Well, hey, everybody. Grim Green, GrimGreen.com back here today. I usually upload a video anytime the FDA makes a big move. I've done it a couple times now. The last time I did it was in April 2014 when they first sort of said, hey, we're going to have these deeming regulations. Here's kind of a preview of what they are. And then we kind of did nothing for two full years when we thought that they were going to be sort of retooling them and, and redoing them. If you remember way back in 2012, I think it was, was the first time that the FDA sort of started talking about their deeming regulations. And then they proposed these deeming regulations. We called them the proposed deeming regulations. And they were far too strict. And they were told, no, you have to go back and redo these because they're far too strict. And so they did that. And then they came out with another proposed deeming regulations back in 2014. And then we didn't hear anything for two solid years. Well, this last week is when they released, officially published, the FDA deeming regulations, and phew, it's huge, man. It's a huge deal, and I know I might sound like a broken record because I've said this before in the past, but this, this is a huge deal, and it doesn't feel right to me to just sort of carry on business as usual, like let's release review videos, let's get on YouTube and complain about an atomizer's O-ring. It just... To me, that personally doesn't feel right. If you've been following me on any other social media, whether that's Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, I can't go back to business as usual. I can't just post a picture and be like, look at this sick new atomizer I got. It's so sick and I love it. I can't, I can't do that. I just can't bring myself to do that. I don't feel right going back to just business as usual. I don't feel right about just going back to doing Welcome to Mod Monday. Welcome to Topper Tuesday. You know what I mean? Let's let's get on a wild card one Wednesday and like I said, let's talk about a, a tank that leaks. Like that seems completely superfluous to me to just go back to business as usual and I don't know that I'm going to be able to do that. So what I'm going to do is this week I have pre-shot all of my review videos. So those are going to be published like normal so this week there'll be a mech mod or you know mod monday topper tuesday wildcard wednesday and i'm gonna have the vlog this thursday and obviously the vlog this thursday is gonna be yeah you know more of this more of fda stuff i don't even feel honestly right i don't feel it doesn't feel right to me to just get on the vlog and be like let's do a vape pairing let's do a beer tasting let's do some first impressions of some fucking chinese tanks that doesn't even matter it doesn't matter none of that matters it just like i said it doesn't feel right to me so i'm gonna see how i feel more towards the end of the week uh but i am in and have been in 100 percent advocacy mode so if you're a new vapor or even a non-vapor and you're watching this video what the FDA has done is release their deeming regulations for tobacco and electronic cigarette or vapor products. And the problem is they're being very, very, very lenient with tobacco, which we know is bad and we know kills hundreds and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people every day. And they're being very incredibly over-regulatory, just super strict on vapor products and if you watch the normal media that's coming out that you'll see in the newspapers and online and this that and the other it's being framed in a certain way so that the public kind of goes oh well that all sort of yeah makes a lot of sense what you're gonna see out there is it's being presented as like saving the kids so you're gonna see a lot of like oh well now electronic cigarette companies have to card people under 18 to buy their products yes of course the vapor industry fully supports doing that because that makes absolute sense. You're going to see a lot of things like, well, now vapor products have to report what their ingredients are in their products. And yes, that absolutely makes sense. The vapor product industry is not against reasonable regulation, but what these FDA deeming regulations are going to do is effectively wipe out 99% of the vapor products currently on the market. Literally, all that will be left is big tobacco, Sigalite products. That's, that's it. That's 
all that will be left. And I'm not trying to get alarmist because a lot of the advocacy groups, Casa, Safada, Not Blowing Smoke, we all knew that these regulations were coming. We knew that they were coming, and now that they're here, we actually kind of have like a jumping off point to kind of form a strategic and an effective, you know, campaign uh, against the FDA as far as what we're up against. So we did it, me and Ruby did a podcast on Thursday kind of talking about this, kind of saying, you know, let's take a breath, let's not panic, let's not freak out. And what we need to do is be adults about this and we need to be, we need to work in a constructive manner. I, I know that there's a lot of angry people and a lot of very frustrated people and you can get on there and on, on Twitter and Facebook and just be like, yeah, fuck the FDA. But that's not, that's not constructive. You know what I mean? That's not what we need to be doing. You can say, you can run outside and shout fuck the FDA all you want and it's going to accomplish zero. So what we need to do is actually have a plan, actually have something constructive, something viable that we can do. Like I said, reasonable regulations, reasonable regulations make sense. My, all of my background is in food manufacturing and so I understand things like having good uh, manufacturing processes and HACCP and GMPs and stuff like this to make sure that we have the, you know, a, a safe, clean product as far as e-liquids go to release to the public. Yeah, I get that. You need to be 100% transparent. You need to say what's in your liquids. You know what I mean? There there has to be there has to be reasonable regulations in place. That's kind of what I was expecting. What we got was something completely different. Like I said, it's being framed as <clears throat> save the kids. We're saving the kids. Yes, we're saving the kids. Yet again, we're saving the kids. But like I said, what's really going on is that 99% of the vapor products that are currently on the market will disappear. And that's just the fact of it. There will be no more liquids. There will be no more mods. There will be, there will be no more anything. And I don't know how many times I can say that, but there will be no more anything. If China companies want to sell their products in the United States, Yes, they have to go through these regulations as well. They would have to apply for the PMTA, which will cost millions, ma with an M, millions of dollars to get your product onto market with no guarantee whatsoever that they'll actually make it to market. Uh, in the last, you know, whatever, since the inception of the FDA, they have approved one new tobacco product with, you know, not for lack of trying, there's been thousands and thousands and thousands of these uh, PMTA applications. One, one has been approved. So what do you think the odds are that you guy making mech mods in your machine shop are going to be able to even afford these, much less get approved? It's it's pretty bad. There is some hope out there. It's certainly not time to give up. It's certainly not time to stockpile my juice so I can keep vaping or stockpile batteries so I can keep vaping. That is the completely wrong outlook to have. It's about coming together finally and doing something effective. What we can do, contact your local senators, contact your representatives, ask them to support HR 2058. This is the single most viable option we have is HR 2058. And what HR 2058 would do is change the grandfather date from 2007 to 2015 so that all of the products that are currently on the market will be allowed to remain on the market. I was on the Safada member call uh, conference call last week and that seemed to be the overwhelming you know, theme of the whole call was what we need to do now, what we need to get vendors to do, what we need to get consumers to do is support HR 2058. If you're not sure if the vendor that you support or that you buy from is doing this, ask them. Support vendors that support advocacy, that support, you know, uh, contacting your Congress people, contacting your representatives, and supporting HR 2058. It still kind of boggles my mind that. Just not two weeks ago, the Royal College of Physicians released their paper, their study, saying that vapor products were 95% safer than traditional tobacco and that vapor products could help 
all of the harm, could reduce all of the harm caused by tobacco cigarettes, and that their, you know, regulation should not be hindered or stifled in any way, and that vapor products should be as widely used as possible to help people get away from tobacco cigarettes. It was like this bombshell. It was great. It was unbelievable news. I was so excited. And then not a week later, not a week later with that information out there, the FDA goes, nah, that just, that just boggled my mind. And a lot of uh, the reason why a lot of these vapor companies are upset again if you're not a vapor and you're here watching this for some reason a lot of why these vapor companies are upset is because the FDA is being much harder on vapor products than they are on tobacco products we know that tobacco products are bad we've known this for for decades now right and cigarettes are still readily available and purchasable anywhere i can go right now in where I am in California, it's easier for me to get cigarettes than it is to get a vape. It's easier for me to get cigarettes than it is to get a vape, and cigarettes are just readily available. There's a 7-Eleven right there, and I can just I could go buy a carton of Marlboro Reds and just smoke till I'm blue in the face, and that's fine. California is okay with that, and the FDA is okay with that. But if I want to not do that, if I want to switch to a much, much harmful, less harmful alternative, even even being recognized by the Royal College of Physicians, a highly, highly respected group as being 95% less harmful. If I want to do that, no, they, they don't want me to do that. The FDA doesn't want these vapor products on the market and they don't want you to use that. So like I said, just be adults about it, be strategic, don't just spout off and say, ah, fuck the FDA and I'm going to vape anyway and I'm going to stock up on nicotine so that I can mix my own juice and I'll be just fine. We, we can't have that outlook. We need to have, like I said, something strategic in place. I'm going to post a link in the description to a couple of helpful uh, articles that I read. I'm not familiar with this website, but there's a website called fee.org, F-E-E.org. They have an amazing article that got posted recently where the big headline is how the FDA is helping big tobacco and encouraging teen smoking. And yes, it's all about these regulations. The second thing we can do, obviously, like I said, call your Congress people, call your representatives, urge them to support H.R. 20. 2058. You have to remember that these Congress people and these representatives, they work for us. They work for the voters. They work for the taxpayers. So when you reach out to them, they not only have to listen, but in a lot of cases, you can request a reply from them. I've been emailing my local representative guy here in San Diego at least three or four times already, just requesting a response, just saying, just just give me a response. I want to see where you stand on that. I've been taking to Twitter like crazy, tweeting at Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, uh, Donald Trump, the FDA, the FDA tobacco. I've been tweeting at people that I know vape like Leonardo DiCaprio and Samuel L. Jackson. We need all the support we can get. The next step for me, what I'm going to work on this week is reaching out to media. So newspapers, uh, television stations, radio stations, we need to get our stories out there in the public. And once a television station or a news media outlet gets a hold of a really good story, it's going to spread around and they will help apply the pressure to the FDA, not only for us, but with us as well. So that's going to be that's going to be my next thing that I'm going to be working on probably all of this week. So the last thing that's going on is there is a huge, there's a big lawsuit in the works. Uh, let me go over to not blowing smoke and, uh, read quickly and I'm going to have to move my camera. Ugh. I'm going to have to move my camera to see it. Um, Stefan posted in the not blowing smoke, uh, Facebook group today, Casa, Safada, AMSA, AVA, and not blowing smoke 
have formally announced their coalition to pursue legal and legislative strategies. Now that the FDA's final deeming regulations have been released, the coalition will continue working to determine the correct litigation strategy and legislative actions. We will be informing the vapor industry and community of the next steps, deadlines, PR objectives, and grassroots efforts. Organizations interested in participating should contact coalition partners. Feel free to contact any of the organizations Listed above for more details in the coming days. So basically, all uh, was this too light? This is way too too bright right here, isn't it? Let me move my camera back. Hmm. So basically, all of these advocacy groups, all of the advocacy groups that we have been pimping, so to speak, over the years, not blowing smoke, the American Vaping Association, AIMSA, ANCASA, and SAFADA, they're all joining together. This is this is. This just makes me so happy. They're all joining together to pursue an injunction with the FDA. So what I'm going to do in the description to this video is I'm going to link to AIMSA, AIMSA.org backslash join the fight, show your support. It's basically now that the FDA has released the final deeming rule, the industry needs to join together and fight these regulations. The first and most immediate step in the industry is to seek an injunction in the federal court to prevent the regulations from being enacted. You can join in in this effort. They are accepting donations. And I know I, I it's like you're asking people to give money. I personally, yes, 100%, I will be giving a boatload of money to this because this is something I believe in. When all the advocacy groups come together to do this, you know that it's going to be well executed and it's going to be calculated and it's going to be effective. So yes, I will absolutely be donating my money, my personal money, as well as money on behalf of all the companies I'm involved with to help file this injunction. So what I'm gonna do is link in the description to where you can just read about it or tell people about it, tell your local shops about it, tell the vendors that you buy stuff from about it because they might not know. And I've got all these conflicting reports from, from different people. Like I said, last week I was on a mountain of phone calls. I was on the Safada phone call. I talked to Adam from AIMSA. I've been talking to Not Blowing Smoke. I've been talking to all these people. I was talking to Kyle from Continuous Current about how we can organize some sort of march uh, for our, our representatives. There's been a lot going on. And so this is something that I I really really believe in. I I am really excited about this. And so you can go donate any amount of money you want. This lawsuit injunction is going to cost millions of dollars. And like I said, I keep getting conflicting reports like the, the vendors in China that I've reached out to that I've said, hey, are you aware of these? They they don't. They are unaware. They don't know what's going on. Um, I Which vendor was it? And I hate to call out vendors. It was Movekin. It was Movekin who make that disguiser mod, that fucking disguiser mod. I was like, are you aware of these deeming FDA regulations that might prevent you guys from selling your products in the United States? And the response I got back from them was like, oh, yeah, we are. But uh, as we understand it, reviewers will be OK. So we can still send reviewers stuff. They, that's the, That was their big takeaway from it was that. Reviewers will be okay, so when can you review that disguiser? And I'm like, what? 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 A lot, every, every China vendor that I reached out to and tried to explain what was going on to, they, they have no idea what's going on. And then I've talked to other people. I went to um, Vader Vapors, a local San Diego shop here, and I went to their two-year anniversary because I've been to that shop a lot, and I know the people that work there. That's the a whole topic of discussion I was there with literally every person I ran into. Every employee at the shop and every customer in the shop, all we were doing was talking about the California legislation that just happened as well as the FDA regulation that just happened. This is on everybody's minds. And I was talking to someone there and I actually don't even remember his name, which is fine because he was one of these guys that said, you didn't hear this from me, but so, you know, how do you trust those people? Anyway, he was saying that, oh yeah, there's some big Chinese companies Kangertech is in to donate millions of dollars to help out in any way they possibly can with the FDA, which I thought, well, that's if that happens, then yeah, 
that's really fantastic news. But then I reach out to these other Chinese companies and they have no idea what's going on. So look, I'm rambling here. I want to wrap this up. In closing, these FDA regulations are not ideal, but there is hope down the pipeline. Supporting HR 2058 and getting involved with this injunction are two wonderful ways to get started. Don't go on Twitter and tweet at the FDA and say, fuck you. Don't get on Twitter and tweet at FDA tobacco and say, fuck the FDA. Be adults about it. There's no, <clears throat> that's such an odd response to have just like, ah, fuck you. Yeah, fuck you. Fuck the FDA. That serves no purpose. It might let you vent a little bit, but do it somewhere out of the public eye. You know what I mean? We need to be adults. We need to be focused and unified and together literally now more than ever. And I know I've said that in the past, like, oh, we all need to come together and we need to fight all this stuff. Right now, we absolutely need to come together. We need to be unified. Uh, I, I believe in this product. I believe in the people that use this product. And like the Royal College of Health said, this is the biggest health breakthrough that we have ever seen in our lifetime. And unfortunately, our government and our FDA want to take it all away from us. So we do have some options. Like I said, I, I can't just go on business as usual. As of right now, I just can't do it. What I'm going to do is publish the videos that I have already recorded this week. We'll see how I feel towards the end of the week if we're going to keep doing reviews and stuff. I'm not saying like I'm going to retire from reviews or anything. I'm just saying right now my mindset is so focused on this FDA and California issue that I can't, I literally cannot think of anything else. I haven't been rebuilding. I haven't been doing any of my normal vape stuff. I've got atomizers just strewn about all over the place. I have half charged batteries. I haven't been able to focus on anything else but these FDA regulations and I don't feel right. I don't feel normal going on just business as usual like, well, oh, yeah, this tank and this, that, and the other and Epiclouds juice and blah, blah, blah and all this stuff. I just, I just can't do it. That's not where my heart is right now. Like I said, I'm going to see what I can accomplish this week. We're going to get towards the end of the week and uh, hopefully I can get down and get into a good place where I feel comfortable shooting just a review video for a product. You know, I get that people, some, you know, people need to have that like sense of normalcy. Like let's just, let's do this FDA thing, but let's also review an atomizer. Let's do this FDA thing, but let's also have a vlog. You know what I mean? I get that. Um, we do plan on moving forward, obviously, with the podcast. Of course, we're planning. I'm going to do vlogs. It's just these reviews and these hand checks and these pictures. And I just, I don't feel comfortable going on business as usual. And this has run way too long already. So that's what I got. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Um, Mod Monday video will be up um, a little bit later today. And just get involved. Just we're all on each other's side. There's no need to infight with each other. There's no need if one guy says, oh, they can't regulate a tube as a battery or as a tobacco device. Yes, they can. It's intended use. Literally everything we have will go away. And as long as we can all get to that same page, then we can all move forward together and unified. I believe in us. I believe in vaping. And I believe that uh, in the end, true science will prevail and not FDA bureaucracy. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, now more than ever, let's keep on vaping.